Alright, so we're looking for the molecule that contains six bonding electrons. So I prepared the question beforehand and I drew each one out. So now if we just add the electrons here, so one from hydrogen, one from carbon, hydrogen and carbon, hydrogen and carbon, hydrogen and carbon, and here this uh, double covalent bond, so there's a total of four electrons here. So that basically gives us a total of 12 electrons. Here you have one, two, three, four, total of four electrons. Here you have one, two, three, four, five, six, a total of six electrons. And for this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve electrons. They asked us for the one with six electrons, so C is your answer. Now, for question two, in order to find the relative atomic mass, you're going to multiply the mass number by the percentage. So, 6 times 7.42 plus 7 times 92.58. Now, we're going to change the percentage to decimal, so divide the whole thing by 100. That gives a total of 6.93, and so D is your answer. So, now for question three. A sports metal has a total surface area of this. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to take one mole of silver, and if you check the data booklet, you go here, you find that silver is 107.9 grams. So you found one mole of silver is 107.9 grams. So they showed us that the metal, when it was coated by the silver, it increased by 0.216 grams. So there was a total of 0.216 grams of silver. So how many moles is that? We're going to find that right now. What we're going to do, so we're going to cross multiply. So 107.9 times x is equal to 0.216 times 1. So move that here, so you're going to divide, and x gives you 2 times 10 to the power of negative 3 moles. So we need this many moles of silver to coat 150 centimeters squared, but they've only asked us about uh, how many atoms of silver deposited per centimeter squared. So for one, how many moles is that? Same thing, you're going to cross multiply, and x in this case will be 1.33 times 10 to the power of negative 5 moles. So now we're almost done. But now they asked us for how many atoms are there, not just moles. So we're going to change moles to atoms. You know the Avogadro's constant, which is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. So one mole of atoms gives you this. So 1.33 times 10 to the power of negative 5 moles gives you what? Cross multiply again. Y would give you 8.0 times 10 to the power of 18. And the answer then is A. Alright, so for question 4, we're trying to find out what does not affect the first ionization energy. What kind of property of an atom does not affect it? So I drew it out for you. The black circles are the neutrons, the clear ones, the protons, and the ones in pencil will be the electrons. So part A, the atomic radius. Of course, this is going to affect the first ionization energy because the further the electron or the valence electrons from the posit positively charged nucleus, the easier it is for the electron to be lost because the force of attraction is weaker over distance. And so um, that definitely has an effect on first ionization energy, so A is out. Then part B, the number of electron shells, of course this also affects the first ionization energy because the more shells there are, the more uh, the distance, like I've said before, and there's something called electron shell repulsion. So um, the shells will start to, the electrons, sorry, will start to repel each other and so it's easier to lose the electron and to be ionized and so B is not the correct answer either. Now C, the number of neutrons, of course this does not affect the first ionization energy because neutrons are neutral, it has nothing to do with the positive and negative charge so C is the answer and D, the number of protons it does affect the first ionization energy because the more protons there are, the stronger the positive charge is, the stronger the uh, force of attraction between it and the, uh, the 
between it and the electrons and so that also affects the first ionization energy. So now on to question 5. So which molecule has the largest overall dipole? Alright, so we start with the first A. This one is not polar at all because polarity depends on the difference in electronegativity. So carbon and hydrogen have very, the electronegativity difference is very small and so they basically do not count and so we say it's not polar at all. But as you know, when you go to the right and up in a periodic table, the more electronegative the element becomes and if you move to the left and down, the less electronegative. So, fluorine, you should know that fluorine is the most electronegative. You have nitrogen also and oxygen. Now, for part B, oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, and so it has a uh, delta negative sign over it and the delta positive sign on the carbon. So, you have the um, overall charge or overall dipole to the left hand side where the oxygen is. And carbon with carbon, of course, there's no difference at all because it is the same element. Then for part C, the same thing with the oxygen. Now we have the chlorine. Chlorine is also more electronegative than carbon, so that will have the delta negative sign. But it's less polar than B because the vector sum of the two chlorine dipoles pull against the oxygen. So the overall charge is not all to the left. It's not as much as it is with B. Now for D, it's non-polar. Why? Be although we do have the dipoles, it's because it's um, equal and opposite in direction and so they just cancel out. So the complete combustion of two moles of a straight chain alkane produces 400 decimeter cube. That's not okay. So PV is equal to NRT and we have pressure, volume, R and temperature, so we need number of moles. So we're going to make end the subject formula, so PV divided by RT. Pressure is 1 times 10 to the power of 5 multiplied by the volume, which is 400 decimeter cubed. But now we need to make it into meters cubed, and that's why you do you divide it by 1,000. Then over 8.31, this is already in your data booklet. See, here's Avogadro's constant, and here's the molar gas constant, R, which is 8.31 joules per Kelvin per mole. So if you place that in your calculator, it gives you 15.99 moles, and we can round it to 16 moles. Now in the question, it says 2 moles of a straight chain of alkene gives us, which we just found, 16 moles of carbon dioxide. So then one mole will give us how much? Just half of it, so eight moles of carbon dioxide. So eight moles of carbon dioxide, you should know right away that it should be A, because it's C8, because eight carbons, so eight here, because you're supposed to balance out the equation, but if you want to draw it out, you can. So you have CAH18 and O2, CO2 and H2O, and you balance it out and then if you want to check with the two moles you can multiply by two and you get also 16 moles of carbon dioxide which we found here then question seven so you have reactants and products and you have the elements elements form reactants and products that's why the arrow faces them so now we have methane plus oxygen Okay, combustion, and you have CO2 plus H2O, and the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So from this element to the reactant, we have the standard enthalpy change of formation of methane. We're forming methane. Here to here, we're forming carbon dioxide and two moles of H2O. So we're also forming two moles of H2O. From here to here is the standard enthalpy change of combustion, which we're trying to find. So we place it here. We realize this, this, plus this gives you this, right? So standard formation of CH4 plus the combustion of CH4 equals... Okay, so then that equals the standard enthalpy formation of carbon dioxide plus two times the standard formation of H2O. We'll make that subject formula, so move this here. becomes negative, so CO2 plus 2H2O minus that. 
and which one is correct that would be D so question 8 so we're trying to find the oxidation state of chlorine so ClO minus so Cl you can put an X and O is always 2 minus because it is in group 6 it is in group 6 and so it's going to be 8 so 2 and 6 so it only needs two more electrons in order for it to become a full octet. So, 2 minus. And the overall charge is negative 1. So, x plus negative 2 is equal to negative 1. So, x is equal to negative 1 plus 2 because you're moving this. So, x is equal to positive 1. So, then the answer is either A or C. Then the ClO3 minus, so ClX. O3, so negative 2 times 3, and the overall is negative 1. So x plus negative 6 equals negative 1. Negative 1 plus 6 is positive 5. Okay, so the answer right away is D, and you can do it here as well. 2Cl minus, Cl minus is just negative 1, you already know that. So now for question 9. So here, I'm going to give you the correct one right away. It's 3, 2, and 1. So A is as 3, and C is as 2, so D is 1. And I just um, balanced it. But what's the important thing is, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Overall charge on this side is negative 6. So here, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So negative 2 plus negative 4 is negative 6, negative 6. So it's correct, and that's how you know the answer is B. And the last thing for this uh, video, question 10, is Kp, right? And this is just how it is. The product is on top and then the reactants at the bottom. So P carbon monoxide times pH2, but then because it's two moles of that, it's going to be squared. If it was three moles and it's cubed. So then that answer would have to be C. Switch on the sky and the stars glow for you.